Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm here with the Raspberry Pi 3 running Android 6.0.1 and I'm going to be testing out some PlayStation 1 games. I'll be using EPSXE. This is the newest version from the market and I'm going to be launching my games from within Nostalgia. Just press L2 on my PS3 wired controller and I'll scroll down to PlayStation this is a emulator front end. It was designed for the Ouya, but the developer brought it to Android. It only works with the controller right now, so touch is not supported. Using a wired PS3 controller connected to the Raspberry Pi 3, and let's get into it. First up, Spyro, Year of the Dragon. I have my FPS listed in the top left hand corner. I'm also using the OpenGL plugin. Okay, so I did notice a little bit of slowdown when I first started out. FPS is pretty decent right now. Let's play a little bit and see how it performs. So do I have any fire yet? Oh, I do. I'm surprised it's running this well. Dino dragon little baby thing. Oh, I forgot to hit the button. Sweet. So it's definitely playable on the Raspberry Pi 3 running Android. That means your progress is saved. Okay, zap some progress into me. There are other settings you can change within the EPSXE emulator. You may be able to get a little better performance out of this. Like I said, I downloaded the OpenGL plugin and that's what I'm using for this game. I'll be using that for all the games unless it doesn't play at all and I'll switch it to hardware rendering. So now that I know this game will run, this game is, uh, there's a lot going on in the, in the game. There's a lot of on-screen sprites, there's a lot of on-screen AI. I will try some Final Fantasy games on the Raspberry Pi running Android. 
but for now I have a, only a few games on my SD card. I'm just gonna test those for this video. I will make another video if the interest is high enough. I could test out some Xeno Gears and some Final Fantasy VIII and stuff like that. I'm gonna back out of this. We'll go back to nostalgia. Let's try Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. I have had trouble with this game launching on other emulators and other Android devices. Hopefully we can get it to launch. Let's see what happens. Oh wow, I'm actually impressed that it launched. I've had trouble on tons of other Android devices getting this game to launch. Everything would just be blacked out or really, really glitchy. All right. Steady at 50 FPS. Wow. Steady at 50 FPS. I didn't think he was going to kill me that quick. This is great. It is running really, really good. I noticed in the background there's a couple textures flashing and around the edges of some of these buildings here. Well, I don't see it now, but I just saw it. Other than that, um, the performance is very steady. It's very, very playable. Now, I have tried this with a Bluetooth controller and Bluetooth does work. I prefer just plugging in my PS3 controller because most of these emulators have profiles built in for the PS3 or Xbox 360 controller. And it, they just work when you plug them in. All the other Bluetooth controllers that I have have to be set up. It just takes more time. So I'm going to back out of here. We'll try another game. Since this is running, we should have pretty good results on most of the other games we're going to try now. I was going to try Crash Bandicoot 2, but since Crash 3 worked pretty well, we'll uh, just go with Tekken 3 and then I'll try some Harmful Park. Okay, so yeah, I've had this problem before with the OpenGL plugin. The character select screen, they're missing on the bottom. So this is going to be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and try it just like it sits now. Round 
round one. Fight, fight, fight. And we have super low performance. Half speed. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to switch the core, well, the, the plug-in, back to hardware rendering. So I have to go back to the EPSXE preferences and we'll, we'll, we'll turn OpenGL plugin to hardware. So when turning it to hardware, you see we, we have our character selection screen is fine now. But I'm not sure how the performance is going to be. Round one. Fight. Wow, 60 FPS. So this game really works great with hardware rendering on. And OpenGL, it has a lot of bugs and it's super slow. Now you can set individual game profiles, so if you set this up to run hardware rendering, you can save the game profile and when you launch it from Nostalgia, it will start in hardware rendering mode instead of OpenGL. You can do it with all the games that you have. It does take some setting up, but it's well worth it when you get your ROM list set up and the games you really like to play all the time. Sixty FPS on the Raspberry Pi three running Android six dot zero dot one. Let's back out. We'll try one more game. I'm just gonna launch it from here. I was gonna play Harmful Park. It's not showing up in here. I forgot to scan. So what I'm gonna do is play this game. I don't know how to pronounce this. This is the weirdest, most ridiculous PlayStation 1 game that I've ever seen. We're going to try it with hardware rendering. This is just crazy. Okay, so, I mean, as you can see, I'm a spinning... Oh, just got nutshotted. I, I don't understand, and this, this game actually gives me a headache because I don't know what's going on. It's... Okay, so there's strong men on office chairs. It is the weirdest shooter that I've ever seen. And I know, I am positive there are weirder games out there. But to me, this is just crazy. And I... I, I look at this! I don't know. So it does run good. If this is your cup of tea here, it plays pretty good. We got 60 FPS on the Raspberry Pi 3 using Android. And if you like playing this game or games like this, go right ahead. I'm not going to judge you, but it gives me a headache playing this game. What is going on? It seems like the, the developers just took assets from within their office and started using them for in-game graphics. I'm out of here. 
So that was PlayStation 1 running on the Raspberry Pi 3 using Android 6.0.1. I was using a wired PS3 controller. If you guys want to see more games tested, let me know in the comments. This is what I had on hand for right now. Recently, I have migrated all of my data to bigger hard drives, and it took me days to do it. I have enough room for tons and tons of games. The problem with this setup here is I cannot run the games from external storage. I have to plug in my external storage and transfer them to the internal storage, and it just takes a long time. I only had a few games on hand on a USB drive. I didn't feel like transferring anything. So that's it for now, guys. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Also, if you have any requests on any games running on any emulators, pretty much on any system, let me know in the comments. I will try my hardest to get it made. If you could, click that like button and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead to my channel page. I have tons and tons of videos, and I keep making more. This week, I should be putting out a ton of videos on RetroPie 4.0 and the Raspberry Pi 3. And next week, I'm going to be focusing on the NVIDIA Shield TV console, running all types of emulators. Like always, thanks for watching.